In the opening scene, a young Korean girl sings the national anthem of North Korea, which contains aggressive lyrics directed at the United States. Following this, a nuclear missile is launched into the sky. Across American news stations, reports cover North Korea's controversial actions, with commentary on Kim Jong-un's leadership. Meanwhile, Dave Skylark hosts the entertainment talk show, Skylark Tonight, in New York City. He kicks off the show by interviewing Eminem. Dave's close friend and producer, Aaron Rappaport, oversees operations in the control room with the crew. During the interview, Dave raises questions about the controversial lyrics in Eminem's songs. Eminem attributes most of them to personal emotions and casually reveals his homosexuality. The crew reacts with surprise, seizing the moment to capitalize on the revelation. While celebrating Eminem's coming out on their show, Aaron guides Dave on what questions to ask next. Once the episode concludes, Dave treats Aaron to a night out, surprising him with a party to commemorate the airing of their 1000th episode. Amidst the celebration, Aaron encounters an old acquaintance named Jake. Jake voices his disapproval of Aaron's career path, criticizing him for focusing on trivial celebrity stories while he himself works at 60 minutes. Aaron feels unsettled by Jake's remarks, stirring self-doubt about the value of his work. During the show, Dave welcomes Rob Lowe as a guest, who shocks everyone by revealing that he's actually bald and wears a hairpiece. However, their broadcast is interrupted by breaking news about North Korea and their nuclear arsenal. After the taping, Aaron discusses with Dave the possibility of covering more substantial stories. Dave agrees to support Aaron in pursuing this direction. While Aaron is on the phone with John Kerry's office, Dave enters and shares the surprising discovery that Kim Jong-un is apparently a fan of Skylark tonight, as evidenced by his Wikipedia page. This sparks Dave's interest in attempting to land an interview with the elusive dictator. Aaron decides to pursue the opportunity, mentioning his potential connection with an office in Korea associated with the Olympics. However, their discussion is interrupted when a crew member bursts in, urgently reporting a video allegedly featuring Matthew McConaughey engaged in an intercourse with a goat, insisting they need to acquire it. Aaron receives a phone call from a representative of the DPRK, extending an invitation for him to travel to China to meet with North Korean officials regarding the possibility of securing an interview with Kim Jong-un. Accepting the opportunity, Aaron embarks on the journey to China, eventually hiking to the summit of a mountain near the North Korean border. Exhausted, he collapses and later awakens to the sound of a helicopter landing nearby. North Korean soldiers disembark, accompanied by a woman named Suk, who provides Aaron with instructions for his upcoming meeting with Kim. She informs him that written questions for Dave to ask Kim will be provided, carefully scripted by North Korean officials. With just a small bottle of water, they leave Aaron to await further developments. Back in New York, Aaron shares his adventure with Dave and the entire studio crew. Dave, thrilled by the news, proudly announces on live TV that he secured an interview with Kim Jong-un. His announcement sparks criticism from other TV hosts like Seth Meyers and Bill Maher. Dave dismisses their critiques as jealousy. Later, Dave and Aaron indulge in ecstasy together, leading to a wild and chaotic party at their house, marked by reckless behavior and destruction. The following morning, the guys are visited by agents Lacey and Botwin from the CIA. Dave finds himself immediately drawn to Lacey as she explains the purpose of their visit. They inform Dave and Aaron that, given their upcoming trip to North Korea, the CIA intends to utilize them to assassinate Kim Jong-un. This is in order to facilitate a coup d'etat by the North Korean military. Dave eagerly accepts the proposition, but Aaron pulls him aside, cautioning him that Lacey might be attempting to honeypot them, using her attractiveness to manipulate them into such a dangerous plot. Dave and Aaron visit the CIA headquarters, where Lacey briefs them on their mission. She emphasizes Kim's cunning nature, mentioning rumors such as his alleged avoidance of bathroom visits. The plan involves using a rice and lace strip to poison Kim when Dave shakes his hand. However, Dave suggests a more dramatic approach of blowing up Kim on live TV and being rescued by SEAL Team 6. Lacey dismisses this as reckless and advocates for the simpler and safer method of the rice and strip. During a test run, Dave accidentally covers his mouth while sneezing, prompting a laugh from the group. They leave with the strip, concealed in a pack of gum by Dave, who believes it's less suspicious than the CIA provided back. As they exit, Dave boasts to a crowd of cameramen about meeting Kim and giving him something using a hand. The duo arrives in North Korea to a warm reception at the airport near Pyongyang. Guided by Suk, they tour the city to dispel rumors of famine, passing by a bustling supermarket and seeing a well-fed boy on the street. Suk then escorts them to Kim's palace in a wooded area outside the city, where they meet officers Ko and Yu. Yu discovers the strip in Dave's bag, leading to a tense moment of panic. Desperate to cover up, Aaron and Dave claim it's just gum. Yu test it by chewing a piece, then spitting it out. Relieved, they're escorted them to their room where they meticulously scan for listening devices using a CIA-issued watch. They contact Lacey, admitting they've lost the strip. That evening, the CIA arranges for a replacement strip to be airdropped. Aaron, dressed in dark clothes, sneaks out of the hotel to retrieve the package while staying in communication with Dave and Lacey. During his mission, Aaron encounters a tiger and is forced to run, with the tiger in pursuit. Fortunately, the package lands on the tiger, killing it and allowing Aaron to retrieve it. However, his relief stops, when Lacey informs him that armed individuals are approaching his location. Dave advises Aaron to conceal the package in his buttocks. 
Reluctantly, Aaron complies and is later taken back to his room by soldiers, who strip him but find nothing. Aaron removes the package from his buttocks and sees that there are two strips inside, just in case they mess up again. Later, Kim unexpectedly visits Dave's room and expresses his excitement about meeting him. He invites Dave to join him on a tour of his place. Kim showed him his huge garage with a working tank and played outside, while listening to Katy Perry's Firework. On the other hand, Sook shows Aaron the control room and gives him the script. Kim and Dave played basketball and talked about the rumors about him not having a butthole and his struggles handling a country at 31 years old. To Dave's surprise, Kim arranges for a group of beautiful Korean women to join them for a party, adding to the festivities. Yu and Ko came to Aaron and Dave's room and told them to come to the hall. While watching the children's performance, Aaron sees Yu, looking sweaty and unwell, indicating that the ricin is taking effect. Signaling to Dave, they both become aware of the situation. Suddenly, Yu stands up and vomits blood, shocking everyone. Ko rushes to his aid, attempting to calm him down. In a tragic turn of events, Yu reaches for his gun and accidentally shoots Ko in the head, causing blood to spray everywhere. Kim and everyone was devastated and started to cry. The tragic incident leaves Dave not wanting to continue the mission anymore, which leads to Aaron getting angry and says that Kim is only manipulating him. Dave kicks the rice and strip in the fountain, and then a guard shows up and says that Kim invited him for another dinner. While Kim pays another visit to Dave's room, Aaron holding the remaining strip in his palm, attempts to poison Kim himself, but Dave stops it, saying that Aaron was a Jew. Aaron tries to get the strip out of his hand when Sook comes and wants to talk about the script. During the dinner, Kim's behavior shifts from charming to aggressive as he reveals his willingness to resort to nuclear warfare in retaliation for the deaths of his officers. Shocked by Kim's true nature, Dave leaves the dinner unsettled. Aaron and Sook acknowledge their mutual attraction and begin to initiate intimacy. As he walks through the streets, he stumbles upon the supermarket he previously saw, only to discover that it's a fake store with painted walls and fake fruits, further shattering his trust in Kim. Sook confesses to Aaron that she's giving him false information about their country. Dave barges in causing Sook to quickly hide under the blanket. Dave expresses his growing distrust for Kim and impulsively reveals the assassination plot to Aaron. Upon hearing this, Sook gets up from the blanket and reveals her own hatred towards Kim. She discloses her plan to manipulate the interview in order to catch Kim in a vulnerable moment, hoping to diminish his godlike image among his people. As the interview commences, both Dave and Kim prepare themselves, with Aaron and Sook operating the control room. Kim presents Dave with a puppy as a nostalgic gift. The event captures the attention of both the United States and North Korea. Dave follows the scripted questions, gradually delving into more sensitive topics, including the issue of starvation among Kim's people. Kim defends himself, asserting that his people are well-fed and blaming U.S. sanctions for their difficulties. As Dave's questioning intensifies, an individual attempts to cut the feed causing a struggle in the control room. Aaron defends himself, resulting in a violent altercation where fingers are bitten off and a control stick becomes an unlikely weapon. Sook intervenes, ultimately saving Aaron's life by shooting the assailant. Meanwhile, Dave strategically steers the conversation, mentioning Margaritas, Kim's father, and even singing his favorite song, Firework, to elicit an emotional response from Kim. Overwhelmed, Kim breaks down, sharding in live interview, disproves the rumors that he has no butthole. The soldiers and station crew witness their leader's vulnerability, sparking heated arguments. In a fit of rage, Kim brandishes a gun and threatens Dave, ultimately shooting him in the chest on live TV. However, Dave reveals he was wearing a bulletproof vest, shocking everyone and emerging unharmed. As the soldiers approach the control room, Sook swiftly eliminates them all, reuniting with Aaron and Dave, along with the puppy. Learning of Dave's survival, Kim becomes enraged, feeling deceived by Dave's survival after attempting to deceive him himself. With more soldiers approaching, the trio makes a desperate attempt to escape. Dave decides to take matters into his own hands, using Kim's tank to confront the soldiers. Meanwhile, Kim prepares to launch a nuclear strike while chasing Dave using a chopper. The chopper fires at the trio in the tank, prompting Dave to retaliate by aiming the tank at the chopper and firing an RPG resulting in a massive explosion that destroys Kim's chopper and prevents the nuclear launch. Sook guides Dave and Aaron to a mining tunnel, which will lead them west towards the coast. With a final, passionate kiss, she and Aaron part ways. The duo goes through the tunnel, until they are eventually rescued by SEAL Team 6. As they journey across the sea, Dave and Aaron reflect on the whirlwind of their adventure, grateful to be heading home. Back home, Dave pins a tell-all book detailing their daring mission. Meanwhile, North Korea is depicted as flourishing, Aaron maintains contact with Sook through Skype. Dave's tell-all marks the end of the movie.